We call this a suction gun because we use compressed air to flow across a gap inside the gun. This creates a venturi or vacuum effect. The gap is an open area between the orifice and nozzle. We'll go over setting and adjusting this gap later in the video. The vacuum created pulls media from the media source, whether that be a sump or reclaim, and projects it through the nozzle into the blast area and onto your substrate. As you blast, the nozzle wears, creating a larger opening or orifice in the blast nozzle. This larger opening creates less vacuum, which in turn will pull less media into the airstream. Keeping the nozzle orifice new is critical to operating your blast at all suction blast cap. Let's go over the components of our blast at all suction gun. These component parts are common to all of our blast at all suction guns. There's an orifice lock nut, an orifice with a barbed connection for use with half inch ID air hose. The orifice is sized uh, to control the amount of compressed air or CFM flowing through the gun. Keep in mind, uh, as you increase the pressure, you increase the volume of air used by the gun. We've got an aluminum gun body. There's an O-ring to seal the seat between the gun body and the nozzle. The nozzle, nozzles should match orifice size and are offered in different materials, which we'll go over later in the video. The media inlet fitting, which is also sized for a half inch ID hose. And finally, a nozzle nut to hold the nozzle in place. We've placed a part number breakdown here so you can pause the video and get the part numbers you might need. All the parts can be found at blastedall.com in our online store. Just go to the search bar, enter the part number, and it should pop right up for you. When installing the nozzle, it's important to place the dish side of the nozzle facing the back of the gun and seat it against the O-ring. Remember that O-ring. The flat side should be facing out. Reversing the nozzle won't allow the gun to create the suction needed and it will not pull media into the airflow. This is the orifice. As I said, the orifice diameter and nozzle diameter should match. This creates the best vacuum and means your gun is as efficient as it can be. You can tell what size orifice you have by the number stamped into the hex head portion. This number will correlate to the nozzle size. Standard nozzle sizes are number four, which is a quarter inch, number five, which is five sixteenths inch, and number six, which is a 3 8 inch. There are bigger, uh, but they use a lot more CFM. So be prepared to have compressed air available for the larger sizes. The larger the orifice and nozzle, the more compressed airflow required to operate the gun. For example, a number four nozzle and orifice need 21 CFM at 80 PSI to operate. This equates to about a seven and a half horsepower two-stage air compressor. A number five nozzle and orifice need 34 CFM at 80 PSI. This is gonna be about a 10 horsepower compressor. The number six nozzle will use 47 CFM at 80 PSI. That's a lot, that's a 15 horsepower two-stage compressor. Nozzles are made of different materials offering varied lifespans. A ceramic nozzle, the most inexpensive of the nozzles, is good for general light duty use with glass bead and less abrasive media types like plastic or soda. The tungsten carbide nozzle is a medium duty nozzle. Works well with aluminum oxide, glass bead, just about any media. The best nozzle available is the boron carbide. It's the toughest, lightest, and it lasts longer than any other nozzle. Again, all nozzles are available on the Blast It All online store. Don't forget we have online chat as well to help you find the right nozzle for your application. This brings us to the setup and tuning of your blast gun. Here at Blast It All, we use vacuum gauges to tune all of our blast guns before they are placed in cabinets or sent out to customers. 
We mark the guns with the vacuum level they have been adjusted to, usually around 16 inches of vacuum. Using this system assures that each gun is set to optimum level of vacuum. The process is a simple one using a vacuum gauge and compressed air. With the vacuum gauge attached to the bottom of the gun at the media inlet and the compressed air source attached at the back of the gun, we flow compressed air through the gun adjusting the orifice in or out until we find the lowest level of vacuum. The higher the number, the lower the vacuum. Once the orifice is adjusted, we tighten the lock nut to hold the orifice in place. Remember, as the nozzle wears, the gun can be tuned to accommodate for the larger nozzle opening. Keep in mind that at some point, the nozzle will have to be replaced. All gun parts wear, but when kept in good shape, your cabinet will operate as it was intended. Hey, so there you have it. We hope this video has helped walk you through tuning your blast gun. Remember that BlastItAll.com online store offers all the parts needed to replace, rebuild, or tune your gun. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the videos. Let us know what we can do to share to help you with your abrasive blast questions. And have a great day. Just have a good day from all of us here at Blast It All. We look forward to seeing you again and talking with you. Take care. Thank you for your business. Also, don't forget to check out our Facebook page. We've got the online store. We've got chat, help people out. We've also got the Blast Cabinet Buyer's Guide. It'll walk you through all the questions you would need to answer before choosing a cabinet that'll fit your needs. Thanks again. See ya.